here we go. So I apologize for my sloppy handwriting, but hopefully you can read this. So we've got 4 over x squared plus x minus 6 minus the 1 over x squared minus 4 equals 2 divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6. So this is a rational equation. And how we solve these, you know, if you're taking a traditional math class, uh, traditional algebra 1 or college algebra is probably why you're at this video, is you want to factor these bottom, these denominators first. So we can... So we can come up with a common denominator that isn't so complex. If, this, if those things don't factor, this problem is a monster. Uh, so they'll factor if you're in a traditional class. So to factor these, you've got x squared plus x minus 6. I'm going to show a slightly different method than, than I usually show, uh, just because this is for a specific student. But uh, we're going to factor this by grouping. And we notice that... So we're going to have 4 over, um, instead of x squared plus x minus 6, we want to think about the product of 6 and the sum of x. And so uh, 3 and 2 gives you that. And so I'm going to split this up into x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 6. And if you notice... 3x minus 2x is this 1x we want. Then I'm going to uh, factor by grouping it. So I'm going to take an x out of the first group, and I'm going to take out a negative 2 out of the second group. And what's kind of cool is you'll have this nice factored equation. So if you take an x out, you're left with x plus 3. If you take out a negative 2, you're left with also x plus 3 which means we can factor it again. We have a common, we have a greatest common factor of x plus 3. So I'm going to slide this down since we don't really need the rest at the top for a minute. And so this factors then to x plus 3. If you take out an x plus 3, those factor out. Just, you know, you can reverse, just think of it as reverse distribution. And you're left with x minus 2. So there's a, so there's the bottom factor. The middle chunk, uh, that's difference of squares. So that factors to x minus 2, x plus 2. I, for that one, I would definitely, I mean, if you did it the same way, uh, you'd have zeros in the middle and uh, zero x's in the middle. And I, it, it's better probably just to memorize difference of squares because you'll see it so often. And then if you factor this one in the same method, we need to multiply 2 and 3 to get 6 or 6 and 1. Um, and then you need to come up with a 5 with your middle terms by addition. Well, same thing. You'd have x squared plus 3x, but we want to make 5, so we know it's got to be plus 2x plus 6. And so the front group, if you take an x out, you're left with x squared. Excuse me. That was a mistake. You take an x out of the front two here. Maybe that will help me. So you take out an x and you're left with x plus 3. For the second group, we're going to take out a positive 2 this time, and you're left with x plus 3. And again, you've got a common factor. So we're going to factor that out with the greatest common factor. So it would be x plus 3, x plus 2. And so now this thing is factored completely. So let me pause for a second and catch my bearings. If you're follow along, um, following along with me, now we should have 4 over x plus 3, x minus 2, minus 1 over x minus 2, x plus 2, or x plus 2, x minus 2, equals 2 over x plus 3, x plus 2. So that gets us to the next round. So we're, we've got everything factored on the bottom. So what we do at this point is get a common denominator. So we look for things that are missing. We want one of everything. Notice I've got an x plus 3 here and an x plus 3 here, but there is no x plus 3 in the middle. So we know we need to multiply the middle by x plus 3 on the top and the bottom. 
because x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 is 1. So we have just multiplied that middle chunk by 1. All right, then let's look at our x minus 2. Let's see where else that's located. Okay, it's located here. But if you notice, the third place doesn't have it. So now we need an x minus 2 on top and bottom. Okay, so we're doing good so far. Uh, but what does the right, anything on the right side have that the left side doesn't have? And if you've noticed, there's an x plus 2 here and an x plus 2 here. We don't have it here, so we're going to have to multiply this by x plus 2, top and bottom. Well, the reason we get a common denominator is now we could multiply by the reciprocal across the entire equation and eliminate the denominator. So if I multiply this whole thing by, I'm going to multiply it by its, the reciprocal of the denominator, which is x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 2 over 1. We multiply it by this really complicated fraction. Multiply these two together and distribute it through. Uh, and let me rewrite that so maybe it, it, you can understand how, what I'm doing here and see it more visually. You'll eliminate your denominator. A little too big, but I did, I think, manage to kind of squeeze it in here. Um, and if you notice, I've taken the left side here times the reciprocal, and I'm going to distribute this whole thing through all three of these. I'm going to distribute it to all through the entire equation. You multiply it times both sides of the equation, so you have to distribute it into everything. Uh, probably I'll get some flashback about showing it that way, but, but it seems to work for my students. Uh, and so what happens here is then the x plus 3's cancel, x minus 2's cancel, and x plus 2 would cancel here. And then it would, and then if you distributed it to the middle part, the same thing would happen. x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 3 would cancel. Because you're multiplying it the same thing to all three. And then the final group, you would multiply it through x plus 2 x plus 2, x minus 2, I forget which is which, doesn't matter, x plus 3, x plus 3, and so, so effectively by multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator, the denominator is now gone. And so we're left with a much simpler equation that we can solve. Don't forget the minus sign. That's one of the big mistakes here is you do all this really complicated stuff and then you forget that minus sign, or some negative sign. And so we're going to distribute then the 4 through. So that would give you 4x plus 8 minus x minus 3. And that's a mistake you'll make if you forget the negative. You'll forget to distribute the negative into that 3. And it'll be positive instead of negative. And then 2x minus 2. Uh, then you combine your terms on each side. So this would be 3x plus 5 equals 2x minus 2. Oh, and see, I already made a mistake. Some of you are already, the alarm bells were going off. Uh, see if you found my mistake. There it is. That should not be, that was a terrible, that should not be a 2. That should be a 4. So this should be minus 4 there. Just erase that. So that was 2x minus 4, so that'd be 2x minus 4. And then you subtract your 2x left, subtract your 5 right, and we've got it pretty much hammered out. 3x minus 2x is x, negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9, and there's your final answer. Now, it'd be good to plug that back in to your original and make sure it works. It's going to, but it's a good idea to always check your work. You put in a negative 9 here, and the left side should equal the right side. So, hopefully that helps you. See you next time.